Hello everyone and welcome to the 26th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. This is the final tutorial of our three-part series of Drag and Draw. So uh, I'm going to quickly recap something, uh, some things that we did in the previous tutorials and then we'll move on with actually dropping the image into our view. Now there's also something I have to change here so I'll go over that in just a bit. So in the last tutorial I showed you how you could uh, drag something into the view, how to register when you drag into, out of, and around the view. That's what we learned in the last tutorial, and of course, what to return uh, when certain things happen. So, if nothing, if you don't want to have the operation occur, you return NS drag operation none, and of course, copy, etc. So, um, that's what uh, we learned in the last tutorial. And the tutorial before that, uh, I covered how you could register for drag types, and we registered specifically for image types that are dragged around. And um, we'll, I have to come back to that in just a bit. But we also, just as to recap, we have an image instance variable that's going to store all of our image data. And of course a property with that as well. So with this though, um, the only problem with what we have here so far is that um, when you're registering for NS image, image pasteboard types, it only actually refers to image types that are being dragged around. So in the first tutorial you'll remember that I dragged an image from iPhoto and that's because it registers those that are being dragged from applications such as Safari or iPhoto, basically actual images that are dragged. Now the, there is a difference though between those and ones that are actually in the finder as files. So just to change this uh, to allow us to drag types from files, so actual images that you have in the finder, we're going to change this just to allow all types to be dragged in. But of course, we're still checking to make sure the image, or we can actually use what we're dragging as an image. But anyway, uh, so we're going to change this just to accept basically all file types for this. So to do that, we just have to create an array, because this is what a register for drag types takes as a parameter. NS array, array with object, and we want to use NSURL pboard type. And a URL simply stands for a uniform resource locator, or used to be universal resource locator. And basically what this means is that we just are, uh, we can accept any resource. So basically a URL can be a web page, or it could be your finder. It can be pretty much any um, path that you'd have some resource located. So uh, if you pass an NSURL pboard type, you're basically registering for every file that you would ever use. So with that, uh, we now have that out of the way, and of course now we want to cover how we can actually accept the data when we drop it into our view. So the first method we need to implement is called prepare for drag operation. And basically this returns a bool, yes, if it's going to prepare for the drag operation or actually perform the drag operation, and return no if it's not. And this is basically the last check you'll have before you actually go on to perform the operation. So, for example, uh, you might use this if your application, uh, maybe, you know, you drop some a file or something into a view and you can't process anything else while it's doing that. Or maybe you've disabled the view uh, for doing some other process in your application. Um, so, you, I'm sure you can think of some examples where you might want to use this. But basically, you would set up some conditions in this method and you would return no if you didn't want any operation to occur. But in our case, we're always going to want uh, the image to uh, essentially become the, we want whatever we're dragging in to become the new image. So we're always going to accept the, uh, whatever we're dragging in as um, it's always going to be yes. So we're just returning yes in this case. So the next part is where you actually perform the operation. And this is just bool perform drag operation. And this returns yes if it's successful, basically, and returns no if it's not. And what we're doing in this method right here is we're going to take in the image data from our uh, sender, or our thing we're dragging around. So to do this, we can test once again. We probably don't need to because we test up here to see if we're dragging an image around. But just to make sure, we can test it again if we want. And we can say NS image can it with pasteboard, and we'll pass in our sender dragging pasteboard. Alright, so um, again that was just what we did up here to test to make sure that this image can actually, the thing that we're dragging around can actually be initialized as an NS image or created as an NS image. So the next part of course, if we can do this, then we want to create one. So we'll say new image gets NS 
not BS, but NS, image alloc in it with pasteboard. And in it with pasteboard is obviously just kind of convenience initializer, which allows you to take the pasteboard data and create an image out of it. So uh, it saves us any extra code that we really need to do. And we can just pass in our senders dragging pasteboard. All right, so now the next part, of course, is to assign our image instance variable that we have in this class to our new image object. And to do this, we just say self set image new image. And adhering to memory management, since we're not using arc or garbage collection, we have to release our new image that we just alloced right there. All right, so the last part of this is, of course, we have to return yes or no, and we're always going to return yes. We're just going to assume that this is always uh, true, and even if it's not, the only difference between returning yes and returning no is that the next method we have won't be implemented. So if we return yes, then we're going to go on to this final method called conclude drag operation. And for our case, it doesn't matter, because all we're going to get this method to do is redraw the view. So uh, we're just going to say conclude drag operation, and in this, we want to tell our view that it needs to redraw itself because essentially now we have a new image uh, that we've dragged in. And so our view should redraw whatever uh, image we now have. So we need to tell our view, hey, redraw yourself. And to do this, we just say self set needs display. And this tells our view that, hey, uh, you know, you need to display yourself again. And that's um, what we say. We never call draw rect uh, directly, that's kind of just a bad move in general. What you always want to call, if you want to ever call your drawing code for your view, you always just say set needs display, and that will always tell your view that, hey, whenever you get a chance, just make sure you redraw yourself. And for our purposes, this will pretty much happen instantly because uh, we're not having any super, you know, large processes going on that would ever uh, stop us from drawing the rect. So uh, anyway, just to point out, you never want to say self draw rect, you always want to just say self set needs display, and that will tell your view, hey, make sure you draw yourself. All right, so now it comes on to the drawing code. We've already got our image, and now we need to draw that image into our view. So um, if there is no image, we're actually going to make um, the view red instead, so we'll draw a red view instead if there's no image, and if there is, of course, we will draw the image. So a good habit that you may want to get into when you're doing draw recs is always call super draw rect and then pass in dirty rect. And the reason I think this is a good idea anyway is just because you, um, if you're ever inheriting from anything other than NS view, there's a good chance that it has its own draw rect method and it's going to want to implement it. So for example, if you're inheriting from NS image view and you don't call super draw rect, you're not going to be implementing or um, NS image view is never going to get it get to call its draw rect method, and that's where um, all of its stuff is done for drawing the image in. So uh, make sure, for the most part, you can never really go wrong with calling super draw rect. All right, so now that we have that, um, we'll just call super draw rect, and that will tell the super class to draw itself, even though NSView probably won't do anything anyway, but that's uh, that doesn't really matter. So the next part to see is if there's no image, then we want to just draw a nice red color into our view. So to do this, we have to set up an NS color. And this works differently. I know I haven't co covered, colored, covered this yet, but um, basically NS color is a little different than other classes that we work with. You set up a color, you just set it once, and then everything that goes to draw after you set the color will use that color that you set. So for example, if I make a color, not coder, color, and if I make the color red color, for example, and I have a lot of other options, I can make a blue color, black color, brown color, green color, etc. There's tons of other colors, and you can even specify an exact color if you want. But if I say NS color red color, and I want this to be the color that everything that is drawn will use, I can just say set. And this is kind of a smart way to implement colors. Instead of passing in color parameters, uh, all you need to do is set the color once, and then it will every drawing operation will now know that it's going to use the red color. So it um, it's a nice a nice way to implement uh, using colors. So now that we've set the color that all the drawing operations are going to use, we can say nsrect fill, which is a nice convenient function that we can use to fill any nsrect. And I covered 
NSREC briefly in our uh, lesson 10 on image views. So if you are uh, if you don't really remember how NSREC structs work, you can look back on those. But anyway, NSREC, uh, basically we want to pass in the rectangle that we want to color. And that's going to be our dirty rect in this case. And if you're wondering what dirty rect is, it's basically the color, the region that needs to be redrawn. And for our case, it's going to be basically the whole view because as we add images, it's going to have to redraw the entire view anyway. So um, dirty rect, for the most part, is going to be just the entire view itself. So now that we have this, uh, th that two, those two methods right there will set the color to be red and fill will fill the entire rectangle that we set with that color. All right. So now uh, the last part is to, of course, uh, draw the image if we have one. So if there is no image, we'll draw that. But if there is, then we will, of course, draw the image. Now there's a nice method we can use from NS image and it's simply draw draw in rect from rect operation fraction that's the entire method length and it looks probably more complicated than it is but um, you know it's not really that bad so all you do is you send this message to an NS image object such as our image right here and draw in rect just tells you where uh, what rectangle you want to draw in and in this case it's going to be our dirty rect that's the going to be our view basically. So that's just the rectangle that uh, this image is going to be drawn within. And then from rect is the area of the image that you want to draw from. So if I say, if I set a specific rectangle up for this, I could say, well, I want to take, um, you know, from the origin 4040 from our image. And then I could set the size to be 2020, or sorry, 200, 200 or something. And um, it doesn't really matter what the size is, but the point is you could take any dimensions of the image you wanted and then you could draw from those from whatever is in that rectangle onto our view. So if I set specific dimensions in from rect, it will take that specific rectangle of our image and then it will draw whatever that rectangle has within it to our destination, which is uh, dirty rect. But of course, if you want the entire image, you don't actually have to find the dimensions of it. The image, you can just say NS0 rect. And this is just a nice thing. You'll find that it repeats like this uh, through a lot of Coco stuff. And basically what this means is that you're just going to say, if you say NS0 rect, it assumes, well, you probably just want the whole image. Obviously, we don't want a zero rectangle, but we want the entire image. So if you, anytime you ever pass an NS0 rect, it will just pass or it will just take the entire image and then it will dr obviously draw that image into where we set right here. The next part is the operation, and this is kind of confusing, um, but basically the one we're going to be using is NS Composite Source Over. And this is kind of a confusing concept. Uh, if you want to look more into this, you can option click uh, NS Composite Source Over, and it will bring you all the other options that you have. But NS Composite Source Over will take your source image, which will be our image right here, basically the thing that you're dragging. And it will take that and basically cover the, the area that we're trying to fill with that image. And that's what the over part means. So NS Composite Source Over takes the source image and covers the area that we're using. Um, so uh, again, you can look up other, uh, there's tons of other composite things that you can use. and uh, But for the most useful anyway is probably NS Composite Source Over. The last part is the fraction, which is the amount of the image you actually want to use. So uh, this is the like alpha slider basically for your image. So what this means is this runs from 0 to 1. If you want to display uh, the full image opacity, I should say, then you are going to put in 1. And if you want the image to be invisible, you could put in 0. And then of course anything between 0 and 1 would change the opacity of the image. So Obviously, one would make it opaque, and zero would make it, um, I don't know what the term is, but invisible. So basically, if you put in 0.5, you know, you'd have like half the uh, image visibility on your view. But you can tinker around with that, and you'll see what I mean. So now we have all the uh, things that we need to run this, and we can go ahead and do that now. So here's our Lesson 26 window, and we have a few things we can try out here. So here's iPhoto, and I'll drag my little... Uh, image of my CPU over and we as you can see we can drag this around and it will work just like that so uh, what we can do now is we can try a few other sources so if we want to use uh, an image from Safari we can do that as well 
So we'll just say this, and uh, we can drag this image from apple.com over, and you can see that when we let go of it, it goes in there as well. And we can also use some, an image from the finder. This is just a random screenshot of this code. And as you can see, we can drag this image around as well. So that's basically uh, what we do for uh, when we're using uh, drag operations. And um, just as a word to the wise, though, I used NSView in this application simply to display that we're not using uh, an image view to drop this image into. But if you were to use image dropping, you should use NS Image View. It would be a wiser decision anyway, because obviously it's built to uh, drop images into it. Now, uh, I just used NS View though to display that all these operations you can use to take in any piece of data that you want, uh, get its contents. You can. There's tons of other methods you can use to uh, get the URL of the file you're dragging. And then you can take that and you can essentially do anything with this drag, these drag and drop uh, tutorials. So, um, you know, this is not limited to images. That's the main thing that you should take away from this: is that it's not all just about dragging images into a view. It's a really about you can take any piece of information from the thing you're dragging, and then you can extract whatever you want from that. And then um, you can use any of these methods to register when you let go and when you enter the view, etc. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, this little series on drag and drop. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And uh, I hope you stick around. Please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next tutorial.